hello, 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 hello. How y'all doing in Canada? Windsor, Ontario, Canada. God bless you. For those who don't know me, I am Pastor Dorian Morgan from Restoration Station Christian Fellowship in Edgewater Park, New Jersey, all the way down in New Jersey. Now, we consider ourselves northeast in our country, but compared to you, we, we're way south. But God bless you. Those who do know me and remember, uh, it's, it's good to be with you one more time. Bishop Mel and Pastor Kim, they are like my real brother and sister. God bless you. Thank you so much, so much for inviting me tonight to be a part of your service. Um, it's always a pleasure. Listen, I haven't been here for a long time. Uh, hopefully, when they open up the borders and all that sort of thing, we can get back together once again. But I know I don't have a long time, so I'm going to get started. Let me just sing a song real quick. And, and I know some of you know it, but uh, in fact, I need uh, City Church praying for me because I am going to be working on a new project this fall. So I need you praying for me. We've already started the, pro the, the process. So many of you have gotten in touch with me, say, I need, new, I need a new CD. I need this new CD. It's coming out this fall, um, or we'll be working on it this fall. But pray for me. Let's get started. God bless you. This is my anthem. God is able to do just what he said he would do. If you know it, sing along with me. He's going to fulfill every promise he made to you. So don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on. If you know it, type it in for me. Say, he's able. And if you know it, you can sing along too. Come on. Right there in your home. I want you to sing this with me. Say, God is able to do. Come on, say. God is able to do just what he said. And he's going to fulfill every promise. Don't you know he's able? If you've seen him do miraculous things in your life, I want you to type in all caps, he's able. Say, he's able. there you go. If you didn't know it the first time, you know it now. Sing with us as we take it up. Come on, God is able to do. Say, God is able to do just what he said. And he's going to fulfill every promise. Yes, he will. See him in my life. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Say, I'm a witness, a living witness that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you're going to ask or think. Say, there you go. Come on. Yeah. This time I'm going to sing and you repeat after me. Come on. Here we go. Y'all pray for my voice. Come on. Say, oh, 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 he is able. Come on, you say, you. I know somebody singing in their car right now, even in their living room. Come on, I need you to shout out. Tell somebody, say, he's able. He's able. Type it in there. He is able. Do it again. Say, whatever you need. He's going to do whatever you're in. He'll bring you through it. I tried him for myself. I've seen him show up like no one else. He's able. He's able. If you need him, call him. He'll always show up on time. He's able. He's able. Come on. Say yes. Church 
believes. I know Bishop Mel believes. I know Pastor Kim believes. Say yes. Do you believe he'll heal Canada? Do you believe he'll heal your town? Do you believe he'll touch your family, even your children? Say yes. on God he won't give up on you no matter how far out you go don't you give up on God he'll never 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 give up on you so don't give up, don't give up. encourage somebody's heart don't give up. call a family member and tell them don't give up. call a loved one and say don't give up. tell your neighbor don't give up. tell your co-worker don't give up. tell your children and their children, because my God is able, don't so don't give up, don't give up. Well, no matter what, don't give, don't give in, don't, give up. don't throw in a towel, don't give up, don't give up on God, don't give up, don't give up. Don't give no, up. no, don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. Take a few minutes right there just to worship God. Before I move on, before I say another word, before I preach tonight, I need you to give God a praise right there. I need you to give him glory if you know that he's able. If you're sitting in a situation that looks like it's untenable, you need to lean on God because he's able to open up doors that no man can close. He's able to make a way out of no way. He's able to show up just when you need him. Come on, he'll touch your mind. He'll heal your body. He'll heal your relationship. Whatever you need, you got to give him praise right there. Give him praise right there. Come on, City Church. I know you're home and alone, but come on, give God praise right in your living room, right in your bedroom. You might be cooking dinner. I dare you to throw up your hands and give God the glory. Hallelujah. 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 He's able. He's able. He's able. Amen, 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 amen. One more time, type in all caps with a bunch of exclamation points. He's able. He's able. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not going to be long. I know preachers say that all the time, but tonight I'm really not going to be long before you. I've just been, um, we've all been going through. In fact, uh, last time Bishop Mel was down here with us in New Jersey, I believe it was our um, anniversary of 2020. Uh, in February, right before the pandemic hit. So it's been a minute since he and I have touched. Uh, now, we've seen each other. We've talked. We keep in touch. Uh, but, but since we've sat down and broken bread and, and, and had the opportunity just to be face-to-face, -face, so much has happened. So much has happened, certainly since I've been up there uh, to City Church. Um, I, I, I just want to say, uh, obviously, you know we're in the middle of a, of a global pandemic. And uh, I don't know if it's the middle I pray to God it's the end, um, but we've been through a global pandemic. Um, uh, for, 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 for many of us, we've, we've, we've dealt with and watched these things with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Black Lives Matter and uh, uh, racial injustice and uh, attempts at racial reconciliation. And we've been through so many things. We've, 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 we've seen in this country uh, crazy, crazy civil and political unrest. Uh, we had a, a, um, a, a historical uh, election at the end of last year, um, uh, questions as to its validity, uh, which led all to an, to, to an all-out storming of our nation's capital. I mean, we have been going crazy here in the U.S. I, I don't know how, how, how much you've gone through in Canada, but, but I'm sure. I'm sure right there in Windsor, if things aren't always uh, peachy keen or a peachy keen or cream or whatever they say. All I know is that we're all going through some things. I, I just believe many of us have, have lost uh, loved ones. We, we've, we've seen lives gone. Uh, we, we've, we've lost some money. We've, we, we've lost some health. Uh, praise God, uh, we, we, we're bouncing back from some things, but, but we've lost some health. We've lost some family. Uh, uh, Lord, have mercy. Over this last year, 
year and a half, we've been through so many things. And, and, and I mean, I, I love Facebook and social media, but I hate it at the same time uh, because what it seems to do, when I first got my, my pages, it, it, it allowed me to connect with people that I had not connected with in a long time. In fact, what happened was um, uh, I was seeing people I hadn't seen since high school and connecting with people I hadn't seen in 10 and 20 years and all of that, and it was a wonderful thing. But but over this last year and a half, there have been, uh, because the, you're on the left or on your right or you're, you're, you're Democrat or Republican or you're, 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 you're um, conservative or, 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 or liberal, or you're, you're, you're black or you're white, you're all these different things. And, and what, what we've done is we've forgotten to be Christian. And well, even in the Christian world, we're fighting whether you're evangelical or whether you're something else, whether you're this kind of church or that kind of church. And, and we've lost family members. I've seen, I'm talking about family members now don't speak to each other because of the unrest that has been going on throughout our culture and throughout our communities and throughout our society. We've lost family members. We've lost uh, uh, um, longtime friends. I mean, some people who, who, who you grew up with since kindergarten, they won't talk to you anymore because some post or some, some position that you've taken. We've, we've lost uh, uh, church friends. We've lost churches. We've lost, I mean, there's just been a lot of loss in these last 18 months. Uh, but I heard the voice of the Lord say, and, and our, our, our theme here at Restoration Station for this entire year is this is, 2021 is the year of the rebuild. God told us this is the year of the rebuild. He said, look, 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 is there any left among you? <laughs> is there any left among you? This is from Haggai. Uh, is there any left among you who, who remember the former days when things were, were glorious and, and wonderful? Is it like nothing now? Doesn't it look like, you know, our towns are worse? Our schools are worse? Seems like our, our families aren't what they used to be. We used to love to get together and, 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 and just hang out and, talk, you, you know, it, it doesn't it seem like it's, it's worse now. He said, that's all right, but I'm about to do a new thing in you. And in fact, the glory of this latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former. He said, he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. What I'm about to do in this year of the rebuild, I'm about to turn some things around. I'm about to heal some things. I'm about to lift some things up, some stuff that you thought was gone. He said, I'm going to let you recover. And in fact, tonight, 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 that is the word that God has given me for City Church. Recover all. I wish somebody would type that in. Recover all. Recover all. Recover all. I don't know what you've been through, but I hear God saying, city, it, you're going to recover all. It's time for you to go get back what the devil stole. You need to get back even the things that you threw away, the things that you sold away, the things that you thought weren't even worth it, things that you didn't want, but God wanted for you. He said, it's time for you to recover all. You need to go do what God is calling you to do. Let, let's go into the word. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. If you would. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. What happened uh, in, in, in chapter 29, um, David and his, his army was out fighting a, a battle. In fact, they were fighting someone else's battle. Sometimes when you're out there fighting for other folks, things are happening for you. So many uh, preachers I know are out there uh, trying to save the world and they're losing their own families. Uh, so many of us are, are, are so busy in the church and doing the, the things of the kingdom in the church uh, that, that we're losing our, our husbands, we're losing our wives, we're losing our children. We, we got we to gotta pay a little more attention to home. We need to take care of those that God has put in our life. I, I love uh, bishop and pastor's uh, relationship with their family and with each other. They have decided that nothing comes before the family. They, they, God is first family next, and then the church, and then the city, and all the rest that they have to do. And I just believe that if you put your life in proper priority, proper perspective, that God will bless all of those other things. But sometimes we start chasing after all of this other stuff uh, to the detriment of the things that matter most to God. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. It says, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag. They, they came back home on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag. 
attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. While you were away, <laughs> the enemy crept in. While you were so busy doing all of the things that you thought you were called to do, the enemy crept in to your own home space and burned it with fire. And it had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. And they did not, they did not kill anyone, uh, but carried them away and went their way. Some of us, and I thank God our, our children aren't dead, but, but they seem to be carried away. I, I thank God our, our husbands and our wives aren't, aren't, aren't dead, but, but they seem to have been carried away by the enemy. They, they, don't, they don't talk like they used to talk. They don't walk like they used to walk. They don't think like they used to think. And, and it seems like we are on opposite sides of this thing. And, and so they were taken captive from small to great. Uh, 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 and they, they, were, they were carried away. Verse 3, so David and his men came to the city. And there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. The whole family had found themselves uh, in, in a pickle. I don't know about you, but it, it's hard uh, when, when even one person in the house is going through something. Uh, over this last year and a half, uh, uh, the whole house has been going through it. The whole church has been going through. The whole community, the whole country, the whole world actually has been going through. And what has happened is uh, uh, for a while we were isolated with each other. And, and you started to, to find out that, that <laughs> uh, uh, absence makes the heart grow fond fonder. <laughs> you started to realize, oh, shucks, I loved you a whole lot more when you were out at work eight hours a day instead of in with me all day and evening and night and morning. Oh, yeah, and tomorrow and next week and month after month. And all of a sudden, you, you start to see all of the things, you know how it is, the flaws start to, to, to be expanded. The, the flaws start to be uh, uh, magnified because because of the close proximity and 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 the the, the long endurance and, and and so all of a sudden hmm, seems like folks were taken captive you've lost your sons and daughters and wives verse four then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. I don't know about you, but over this last year and a half, I, I have found myself crying at times. Uh, and I, I do know some people who have fallen into deep, deep, deep depression. In fact, the, the, the studies are saying that uh, we are at an all-time high of depression and anxiety and, 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 and mental, mental uh, illness and, and, and mental health uh, uh, situations. We are at, at an all-time high right now where we're weeping so much. He says they had no more power to weep. You ever been all cried out? <laughs> There's a song saying, I'm all cried out. All cried out. And David's two wives, now that don't, 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 don't try this at home, boys and girls. I, I, it, it was what it was, but it ain't supposed to be, okay? His two wives, uh, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. And now David, David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. If I haven't seen anything, uh, what I have witnessed over these last year or so is we are going to find the blame. We're going to start playing the blame game. We're going to start pointing. We're going to start looking for somebody to stone, look, looking for an enemy, looking for someone to be against, looking for an adversary. We, we, in fact, we're going to make sometimes our friends the adversary, our, our, our wives the adversary, our children. And, and, and God is saying, listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Come on, this is, is not the people in your life. It's not the people of the church even that we should be fighting it's the spirit of the enemy and what's happened is he's crept in and, and and we need to learn how to fight and now what's happened is even David's own people I don't know about you if if you have some people that were depending on you and now all of a sudden they're blaming you well why didn't you fill out the paperwork so that we can get the PPP 
I don't know if y'all got PPP up there, but, but you get these extra paychecks and all. Why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do that? And why, you know, everybody starts blaming each other. Why, why, you know, the one side is blaming, why don't you have a mask? The other side, you shouldn't have a mask. One side, why don't you have vaccination? The other side, you shouldn't have vaccination. One side says, don't send my kids back to school. The other say, it's time for them to go back. We are fighting over everything and looking for someone to blame. The CDC said this last time. Well, the who said that? And this, Lord have mercy. And it's crept into the church. Should you open or should you stay closed? Should you watch on stream? Should you do Zoom? Should you do, you know, we, we're fighting and, and we're pointing blame. And pastor should have been ready for this. And, well, no, it wasn't my fault. And, and I don't know about you, but down here it's been kind of crazy. I thank God for Restoration Station. He's kept us together all on one accord. We, we sit down and we talk. I, I know y'all do that sort of thing too. But, but over and over, over and over, we have seen people are looking for someone to blame. They said, we're going to stone you, David, <laughs> because their hearts were grieved. The Bible says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. First point, I just want to want you to strengthen yourself. Sometimes you got to, uh, I think, oh, uh, King James says, encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage. You're waiting for somebody else to call you and give you a woo, woo, woo. You're looking for somebody else to pat your back or rub you and all that sort of thing. Every now and then, you just going to have to get in your own space, in your own time, and encourage yourself in the Lord, your God, you need to start saying, Lord, I need you now. I need you to touch me. I need you to cover me. I need you to lift me up, Lord. I need you to, to you know what I'm saying? He says, listen, in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore at his right hand. Sometimes you have to just start to encourage yourself and start singing songs of praise and start to worship him and start to count your blessings and start to tell him all the good things he's already done. It's so easy to look at the things that we've lost. It's so easy to look at the things that are going bad. But every now and then, you have to say, Lord, if you be for me, who can be against me? And start to encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here. <laughs> he said, because, you know, I'm not going to ask all my, all, my, all my advisors right now. I'm not going on the Internet and say, what do you think about this Facebook family? I'm not going to put it out on Instagram. I'm not going to put it out, come on, on TikTok and Twitter and all, all the rest. Of these. He said, I'm going to go to the Lord my God and find out what I should do. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Somebody type in recover all. In fact, open up your mouth even right where you are and just say recover all. Your, your neighbor might be looking at you saying, what's wrong with you? Just say recover all. Recover. Even if you're sitting at your desk at your job, recover all. You start saying this. Recover all. We are not going to let the enemy win this battle. We're not going to let him get all of the glory. We're not going to let him look like he is better and stronger than our God because we already know that our God is able. We are going to recover all. First, he said you should pursue. We need to start focusing on what has been lost and decide that the enemy is not going to get away with it. It's all right to look at it. Listen, when the children of Israel were going into the promised land, there was this huge, uh, uh, huge wall at Jericho. They didn't uh, uh, walk away from it. They didn't look away from it. They didn't stick their head in the sand and act like it wasn't there. The God told them to start walking around it. Start looking at it. He said, I want you to see it every day. In fact, go around it seven days and on the seventh day, go around it seven times. It's okay to look at the things you lost. When, when you, you know, you need to let your children know, I see that you're gone. You need to see, uh, uh, look at your marriage and know it's not the best that it should be. I, I, we don't talk like we used to. We don't love each other like we used to. We don't hang out like we used to. You need to go ahead and focus on what you're going to pursue. You, hey, look at your money. You need to check out your finances. Some of us don't even want to open up the mail because we don't want to see any more bills or we're afraid to look at our account to see exactly how much or is there or how much is not there. We don't want to look at our credit credit report to see how much it's dropped. We need to look at the. You can't pursue something if you don't look at it. You can't face it if you if, if you can't fix it if you don't face it. Listen, you need to start looking. In fact, admit 
and pursue and focus, I've lost my peace of mind. Come on, if, if you're not able to sleep at night, if you're not able to, to get any peace, you need to start focusing on that and say, Lord, that's what I'm pursuing. I'm pursuing peace. I'm looking for, to, you said that you would keep me in perfect peace if my mind was stayed on you. In fact, you promised you would give me peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't understand what we're going through right now, but you said that you'll give me peace even in the midst of it. I got to pursue my health. You got to say, you know, if it's your health, you need to say, I'm going to pursue that health. I'm going to pursue that thing. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to do the things that I'm called to do. I'm going to pursue it. If it's your career path, because many of us during this time have lost a career. Things have changed so much. They've laid people off. They've sent people home. Um, so many uh, industries have totally changed that people have have to really change their career path. Well, say, you know what, God? I thank you, God, for the job I had, but I thank you for the one that I'm going to have. In fact, I'm going to make my calling my career. I'm going to start doing the things that you've placed inside of me, and I'm going to make money while I do it. I'm going to pursue whatever it is. In fact, I'm going to pursue my relationship with you. Some of us have lost over this year and a half our relationship with God. We're mad. We're upset. We're afraid. We, we, we don't see him showing up the way we want. And we've lost that relationship such that you say, I don't even know what to pray, so I don't pray. I don't know what to read, so I don't even read his word anymore. We, we've been so isolated in the church. I don't go to church no more. And the truth of the matter is I only uh, tune in to, to the uh, stream every now and then. Come on, you want to get your relationship with God back right. Pursue. He said, not only are you going to pursue, you want to overtake. You're going to overtake. Huh. You're going to overtake. Some say, I heard somebody say, well, how in the world can I overtake? How can I really overtake? I don't have the power to do this thing. I love the scripture. I know it's not Christmas time, but I love this scripture in Luke verse 30, uh, verse 1, 34 and 35. It says, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Some of you are saying, how can I recover all, pastor? How can I get this stuff back? How can, there's no way this, this pandemic is bigger than me. This, this, pan, this, this relationship thing, it, it takes two to tango and I can't do it for her. I can't do it for him. How can I do it? My, my children won't listen to me anymore. And I, as much as I I tried. I just can't. How can I do this thing? How can this thing be? She said. I haven't even known a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. He'll overtake you. So if he overtakes you, you can overtake it. Someone type that. If he overtakes you, you can overtake it. Listen, he'll overshadow you. Therefore, also, that holy one who's born uh, will be called the son of God. Listen, listen, God is saying it is time not just to pursue these things, but he's going to empower you to overtake it. Listen, the Bible tells us that that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that is in inside of you and God says that I'm going to overtake you so that you can overtake the things that the devil has taken away from you it is time for you to recover all he said pursue overtake and recover all I wish somebody say nothing can stop me nothing can stop me if God be for me then who can be against me if God stand with me what can stop me nothing you need to say I'm going to recover all because with God all things are possible it is possible possible for my broken marriage to get back together. It is possible for my money that was gone and my funny money to come back and God to bless me like he blessed Job double at the end as he did from the beginning. It's, it's possible for me to cut, recover all because he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. He's able, he's able, he's able. Somebody say recover all, recover all, recover all. I need you to type that. I need you to scream that. I need you to believe that. I need you to pray that. I need you to walk in that. I need you to do that. I need you to tell somebody else and encourage them. You need to grab them arm in arm and walk together and say, you know what? We're going to recover all together. City Church, we're going to recover all. You recover all in the north. We're going to recover all down here. At some point, we're going to get back together and we're going to recover all together. But it is time to recover all. We will not let the enemy win, not even in a pandemic. We will not let the enemy win, no matter what. I don't care what the politics say. We will not let the enemy win. I hear God saying it's time 
for you to pursue, overtake, and recover all. God bless you, City Reach. Not City Reach, City Church, I'm sorry. I'm tired. It's, God bless you. Uh, it's a pleasure always bringing a word to you because God gave me a word for you. I can't wait until we can get together again. Those who just happen to tune in and you're not even part of City Church, that is the place to be in Windsor, Ontario. You want to find uh, Bishop Mel Freeman, find Pastor Kim Freeman, find the, the church, find the family there, and, and become a part of what they are doing up there. God is blowing their mind. God is blowing my mind through them. Uh, he's going to do wonderful and great things. And if you're already a part of City Church, you need to go out and get your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, even tell your enemy about your church. And God might turn that thing where your enemy becomes your brother or your sister. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you, Lord. We thank you one more time for your grace and your mercy. We thank you right now, dear Lord, for this word that you've given us tonight. We thank you for each and every person that's watching, Lord. Even if they're watching the replay, we know, dear Lord, that you're God of all time. You don't live linearly like we do, Lord. So we ask you to bless them even when they're watching this tomorrow tomorrow, next week, next year, we ask you to bless them right where they are. Encourage their hearts that even though they've lost some things, it is time to pursue, to overtake, and to recover all. And Lord, until we come together again, keep each and every one of us in our separate places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. See, I can't wait to see you up there or you come on down here. God bless.